Do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a proven roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. We walk you through the exact same process that we use to run franchise marketing campaigns for our clients at scale that has resulted in triple digit growth. This blueprint isn't for anyone. It's not for people just starting a franchise. It's not for franchises without long-term goals. This is for franchises that want to scale up their marketing in a predictable and profitable way using a proven roadmap. If you want to sell more franchises, keep your current franchisees happy, and learn from people who have already done it, go to FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com and sign up today. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. Today, I am very excited. I have Kristen Risby, who is the president of Wagon Wash. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jordan, for having me. Of course, it's a pleasure to have you on. So for our listeners who haven't heard about you and Wagon Wash, what are you all about? Wagon Wash is, it's basically a toy store for dogs and cats. Um, We are a full line specialty uh, destination where they can come in, um, pick out some toys, treats, bakery items that we make in house, food, all natural food. Um, But then we also have hard goods, collars, leashes, coats, um, and then full service grooming, as well as our self wash, where you can come in um, with your pet and wash them. And then we have drying stations as well with our specialty shampoos and conditioners. Awesome. Very cool. So I guess like, tell me, you know, you're, you're steeped in the franchise industry. You know, I, I did see that you worked at WellBiz Brand. So tell me a bit more about your journey to where you are today. Yes. So I, my whole career has been in franchising, not on purpose, just sort of tripped into it um, right out of college. I started actually um, with the Little Gem, um, working at their franchise uh, headquarters in Scottsdale. Um, while I was there, my brother purchased a gym and he's uh, the Little Gym owner um, in Colorado. Uh, so it's kind of nice to having the franchisee side, you know, I'm, he's always the person I go to, to run ideas by because um, sometimes at the franchisor level, you forget what it's like to be in the business every day and, and what a simple change to us really means to a franchisee. So I love having him to kind of um, run ideas by, but um, from the little gym, um, then I worked for PostNet, which is a Denver-based franchisor, went to WellBiz Brands where um, we had Elements Massage, Fitness Together, um, and then Fit36, which was um, another of their brands at the time. From there, I went to Remax Corporate, um, which is obviously just a ginormous franchise system, um, and then landed this amazing role with Wagon Wash. So um, I've been so fortunate to not only work for brands that I absolutely love um, and I'm so passionate about, Um, I've worked for brands that are emerging startup um, to brands as big as Remax, you know, with thousands of offices and thousands and thousands of agents. So I've really seen that full spectrum um, for the franchisor level. And, you know, it's I really enjoy the startup the best. (laughs) There's more opportunity for really creating um, and watching this significant growth. Um, And that's what Wagon Wash um, definitely offers. Awesome. So tell me more about, you know, these uh, startup growth phase uh, franchises, you know, like, what are some of the biggest things that they struggle with that that you've seen? Uh, It's always the foundation. Um, You get so excited about selling and focusing on, obviously, that's where the growth happens and you, you kind of forget the basics. And so it's so important to just have those foundations in place. Um, to build from, because the worst thing you can do is be selling all of these units to all of these individuals and families and livelihoods, 
And then a year from now, you've got a lot of stores or units open and they're struggling because the systems weren't in place. That foundation wasn't created. Um, so I'm a huge fan of responsible growth after you know being in the franchise space for a really long time um, and just making sure those franchisees that are trusting you and investing in your brand that you're giving them the support and the tools that they signed up for, that they have every right uh, to expect. Totally. So when you're saying systems, are you referring to a specific system like, you know, ops or hiring or marketing? Uh, any trends in that in that area? You know, it's um, it's really everything. You know, um, how are we, your example of hiring? Um, how are they hiring for those maybe those positions that are kind of tricky to find or retain? Um, making sure that we have the support for that. Um, and but systems in place like internal IT solutions for how are they capturing customer information? How are they tracking? Um, how are they, um, you know, understanding the return on investment for their marketing? So all of those things are just so important. And absolutely, when you're emerging brand, you prioritize, you know, you're not going to have everything ready for those first stores opening, but making sure you've got this plan in place to say, okay, this is what we're going to start with. And then by year three, year five, these are the things that maybe when we're bigger and maybe when um, we've got more dollars to support, we're going to add to those, those systems and solutions. So with that being said, do you find that there are specific, let's call them base systems that you have to have in place before moving into that growth mode? Um, I do. You know, I... I really feel, you know, my background is heavy in marketing um, before I stepped into this role um, with Wagon Wash. Uh, you know, I was VP of marketing with them before. And so my life in franchising has been marketing focused. But, you know, for those, the biggest thing for me is for, for new store unit openings, what is that marketing roadmap from the minute they, you know, sign their franchise agreement to when they open? What's then, what comes, you know, those 90 days after opening and then what's beyond, you know, for a new store, a open store, a mature store. Um, so I've always focused on that and having very dialed in um, marketing plans um, and steps for them. You know, these are the things you should be doing for your grand opening. And I think in franchising, that is an obvious plan, a roadmap, but you still need it once, once they go beyond that. Um, you know, when do they stop um, with new opening messaging and move into general branding, marketing and messaging and offers. And um, just, again, having it really structured, not because we're trying to police it, but because when you come from franchising, you almost know that timeline. Um, and so putting that into place with your new brand um, to really guide those franchisees, I just think is so crucial. Totally. So as a you know fellow franchise marketing geek, I want to dive into this a bit more. <laughs> okay. So, what are what are some of the things that brands need to consider in that ninety day um, lo lo uh, location launch uh, plan? Yeah. So for me, it's always been. I mean, that first ninety days of business post pre opening. Oh my gosh, they have had, they need to have that plan set and in motion. So the implementation is done because that first 90 days, they're in the business. They're dealing with new systems, a new business, new employees. There's so much they cannot be focusing on, oh, you know, what is my digital marketing? Do I need to up my spend? Um, and so uh, really having that narrowed down before they, they open. I even like it to be done before construction starts. Um, so that, you know, once construction starts, once those hammers start swinging, the, we lose them. And so making sure that marketing plan is set in stone. And like I said, on its way to being implemented really months before the opening even happens. Um, so then that 90 days, it's that now open messaging. You've got your offers going out, um, your marketing is really just working for you. Post 90 days, then you're looking at, okay, what worked, what didn't, and really evaluating, do we need to shift dollars here? 
Um, you know, maybe traditional tactics work better in more rural locations. Maybe the digital is working better in more urban and just playing with that. Because again, every trade area is different and we need to adjust. We can't just do a one size fits all marketing plan. But that 90 days is really, you've seen your pre-opening marketing, your open marketing, and then you're ready to involve in your just general branding marketing um, and really, you know, optimize your spend at that point. So you mentioned traditional and digital marketing. Are there any channels within either of those groupings that you have seen work particularly well? For Wagon Wash, digital has been, I mean, with everyone knows that it's digital is so key. I think traditional at this point is a luxury for individuals who have the additional dollars to support it. Um, but you know, when you've got one penny, you're going to, you're going to throw it to digital first and foremost. Um, during the pandemic, um, we launched a new website for Wagon Wash, literally uh, Q1 of uh, 2020. Um, thank goodness, because our previous website, it just, you, I almost didn't want people to go to our website. I didn't want to spend on digital marketing because our, our website just didn't do anything for us. Um, so when we launched the new site, it was just this beautiful time because come March, the world fell apart and we totally adjusted how our brand fund was working for our franchisees and really just put everything into digital. Um, and then our website obviously was working for us and for our franchisees. Um, we added e-commerce during that time. Um, some of our stores were doing delivery. So yeah, digital has been everything for Wagon Wash um, as it is for most. Um, but during the pandemic, just the timing of that to really push our efforts, you could see with the new customer counts every month, it just ticked upwards. And it was an amazing thing to see during a pandemic. But in the pet industry, we've been very, very blessed and lucky um, because, you know, the pandemic proved to be um, a really nice thing for, for our industry. It uh, just has boomed. Uh, that's that's great to hear. So digital can be quite broad. You know, there's organic and paid social, there's organic and paid search. Are you finding specific channels within it performing better for you? We'll get right back to the show, but do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. To find out more, visit FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Now back to today's episode. Yeah, it's, you know, that's a great question. Um, paid obviously was really great to go out and obtain new customers that maybe didn't know about us. Um, organic, the same as well, but um, paid was really just the the difference you know we always had organic efforts in place but um the pay we really went to the next level just because we weren't doing really paid advertising with our old website like i said we really almost didn't want people to go to the website which is just so sad um but um you know adding that paid we just we threw funds that we were doing on maybe traditional um, postcard type tactics for like loyalty program, we took that totally out and just put it all into paid digital. Um, and social media, again, just with the pandemic, that was um, an amazing online effort for us. We're just such a, a community type business. Um, we're locally owned and operated. And so when our customers couldn't be in the stores, um, we really, you know, engaged with our community and customers and pets um, with our social channels as well. Very cool. Love, love the insights, Kristen. So I, I'm curious, you know, one thing that um, I often um, experience, you know, working with a lot of franchises is that there's a big education play. Uh, with your franchisees when it comes to investing in digital marketing. How are you handling that and scaling that out, that education part? Well, you know, it's been hard with the last, for everyone, again, for the last year plus. Um, they don't have time to be educated on digital marketing. They are trying to figure out loan situations. Um, and most recently, again, for all businesses, it's the 
finding employees who show up for interviews um, and then the hiring, the training, and then starting it all over again. So they did not have time to be Focus on digital. So that was what the brand fund did for Wagon Wash is there was no time to train them on those things. Mm -hmm. We just 100% took it over. Um, before the pandemic, we were doing a lot of training education on why you should invest on top of what the brand fund was doing um, when we were not uh, investing as much from the brand fund for their digital efforts. But it's just, it's just so hard. Like it's they're you know, they're entrepreneurs, they're all over the place. So they can't be everything. Um, so I get that's my biggest thing is the brand fund needs to do as much as possible because digital changes every single day, every minute of every day. And it's hard enough for marketers to stay on top of the, the digital landscape and the opportunities and the changes. Um, that frustrating for us, we cannot expect franchisees to know it and stay on top of it as well and be successful by doing so. So, so tell, tell me more about um, effective ways to manage your brand fund, especially for franchises that are really just starting off and may not have this massive, you know, treasure chest of funds right off, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, well, so digital, <laughs> but finding a partner to, to help you, you know, we work with, um, ninth route, uh, who we adore. Um, they are phenomenal, specialize in the franchising space. Um, but they are watching everything that we're paying for and doing for our brand every single day. Um, because we're really busy too, you know, franchise marketers, we're doing everything. It's a luxury to have multiple departments. Um, you have that in the big brands, but in these small emerging brands, you, everyone does everything. Um, so uh, they really are the experts for us. Um, so for a new emerging brand, find that partner um, and get, you know, a great website with great content focused on that SEO, um, really building that up, all of those listings, making sure you're getting found. Um, again, the social platform to engage and have a face behind your brand is so important. Um, but then, you know, that partner, they're the ones doing the deep work for you that your franchise or team just, it's impossible. Um, unless again, you've got a huge marketing team, um, which no emerging brand does. So. Very, very cool. Any tips on how to find that partner and what to look out for? I, yeah. So we, you know, what's, the, what's beautiful about franchising is, man, we all work to help each other. Um, I don't know any other industry that is like ours. So the IFA events, um, any of the franchising events, there's so many amazing suppliers there um, that you can meet um, and then meet with the other brands that they're working with um, and call them directly, meet with them at these events. And I just, you know, we all want the best for one another. Even I swear competitors do. Um, no one's hesitant to refer um, a digital agency or another supplier in another way. Um, but yeah, I think Night Through, you know, we were a perfect match for them in terms of our size. Will we be five years from now when we get bigger and they have more clients? I don't know, but they are absolutely right for us today. And again, franchising, there's multiple suppliers for different stages of a franchisor's growth. Um, and again, I think uh, just meeting them at these franchising events is so important to, you know, build your network within our industry. A hundred percent. So Kristen, one question I always like to ask is what advice would you give someone just starting out as a franchisor? And I know you touched on this a little, but I want to ask this again. Yeah, I would say make, well, number one, find the team. You know, there's so many of us out there. We're, we're um, so niche. We've been doing this our whole careers. We've worked with awesome brands that we can bring our expertise to. I would say a new franchisor, that's what you do. You find your team. Um, and then you go out and find your partners. Um, but lastly, make sure you build that foundation before you start selling like crazy. Again, it all comes back to these are individuals' lives. Um, they're risking a lot of times everything 
um, to be a part. And when you're an emerging brand, maybe um, it's a different level of that investment for that franchisee. Um, so, you know, be careful and mindful of that and make sure that what you're selling is what you can actually provide on the other side, um, not just for that opening, but opening and beyond. I love it. I love it. So I could chat with you about this all day, <laughs> but we are nearing the end of the episode. And I like to end them all with something that I call the lightning round. So a few fast paced right. questions coming at you. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Awesome. So first question, what is your favorite tool or app that you cannot live without? My favorite what app? Tool or app. Oh, I don't know. Uber <laughs> for personal reasons. Um, <laughs> I don't know literally how I would get through life without Uber. Yeah. It's super convenient. Yeah. Uh, next sure question. You wanted, what is I'm your, sure you wanted one that like actually had to do with my job, but that was a personal response. So <laughs> yeah, no personal responses are great. Uh, so next one is what is your favorite book? Oh, what is my favorite book? Well, I'm a dog person. Um, and so I have many, many dog books in my office, which I'm looking at. Um, I think my favorite one is it's basically a coffee table book and it's all the dogs of, um, Napa and they are on the vineyards and they're a part of the families. And it's just all these images of these beautiful dogs living the best life in Napa. So that's, that's probably my favorite. That's awesome. Uh, next question, who is a franchise leader that you look up to? Oh, that's a really great question. I am going to say Steve Greenbaum. Um, and the reason why is I was working for PostNet um, when he and the brand participated in Undercover Boss. And so that was coming out of a recession. And I know I'm supposed to have a quick answer and it's not. But um, we were coming out of a recession. We were having a tough time as a lot of brands were. And this opportunity with uh, Undercover Boss came about. And I always say Steve totally sacrificed himself <laughs> to be a part of this show, but he did it for the brand and our franchisees. And it was just so admirable um, because man, it was really tough to do something like that and put your whole personal and family life story out there. Um, and I just, it was just so impressive. Um, and I, yeah, I've always looked up to him for that. And I think that's where I get my mindset of everything that we do at the franchisor level is for our franchisees. I love it. And you know what, you, you can't fake, you know, putting your heart on your sleeve and being transparent and upfront. Um, you know, people just kind of sniff through that. So that, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last question. I promise. Where can people find out more about you and your franchise? Oh, well, you can visit us on wagonwash.com. Um, beautiful website, if I didn't mention that already. Um, such a fun, colorful website, but you can learn more about us and where our stores are across the country. But you can also learn about um, if you're interested in um, learning more about how you could open a wagon wash. And, you know, we're looking for wonderful people who love pets, who are really business savvy and want to give to their local communities and the pets who live there. So yeah, visit us today. Awesome. Kristen, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And I know our listeners are going to absolutely love it. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me, Jordan. No problem. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. If you found this episode useful, share it with a friend and subscribe now so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And until then, happy marketing.